So, Theo, here the sort of the world is built up in the first movie, and now you can sort of go straight in and rip it all up. Is that's mm. why? Is that why sequels are fun? It is exactly, yeah, because you kind of have already expended the energy, you know, developing the world, showing the world, introducing the characters. Second movie, you know, you get a bit more freedom to just go kind of straight into it, and also you learn. You, you learn some lessons on the first film and you can apply them to the second. I think everyone was very keen to, to make a, a very a bigger movie and embrace the fact that it's a it's an action movie. It's not a genre movie, it's essentially an action film and why not kind of embrace that to its fullest. Is that why they can be a little bit tricky? I mean, there are some terrible sequels that exist. They can be very tricky. As well, I mean, you've got that level of expectation now with this second film. I mean, do you think about that? Um... Kind of, but in a way, no, because you're limited in terms of your control as an action. Sometimes that can be frustrating, but you know you do essentially everything you can before and when you're on set. But after you leave, then uh, you, it's obviously in other people's hands. So you think about it, but you think about it probably in terms of you know your, yourself and the characters around you, making those parts as, as as good as they can possibly be. I mean, the pace of this film is relentless. I mean, from the off, we're off, aren't we? I mean, did it feel like that shooting it? Was it was it a tough, grueling shoot? It wasn't grueling, grueling, but it but, but but it was fairly intense. I mean, you're filming in Atlanta midsummer, and you know it's kind of deep humidity, um, and you're sprinting, you know, uh, and then having kind of a f fight sequence with thirty people at the same time, um, which is but it, but it's fun to be honest because at the same time there's a lot of waiting around on set, so so it's kind of good to expel some energy and, and come home with a couple of bruises and feel like you've earned it. Sounds just like my day at work. To me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, fake headbutts, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. fake 69er sex positions. Yeah, well, we don't quite go there, but yeah, maybe the headbutt. Uh, it feels, uh, talking about... You don't, you don't, no. you're not into 69ers. Well, at work and work generally. <laughs> then I think we can talk about it generally, but we probably should get back to... Um, so in fact, talking about feeling incredibly adult. Uh, and this movie does feel very adult. It doesn't feel like we're going to quite hit the 69 sort of level just yet. <laughs> but there's kissing. There's like a, you've got a bit of a raunchy sex scene. Yeah, yes. You might go into that uh, move. But the camera cuts just as just you're before. going down. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> is that, is that, um, is that the, the, the challenge you have sort of? Growing up with your audience. Yeah, and I think again, going back to doing a second movie, looking at looking at the first, looking at lessons you learned from the first. I think there was definitely a feeling that everyone a had kind of grown up, but also also embraced the fact that that it could be a, a wider film generally, you know, and, and, and embrace the kind of the, the I don't know, you know everyone says darkness, but embrace those kind of more dark and interesting elements and make it a broader film because I don't think it is a, a, a it doesn't have to be a young adult film I think it's it's more adult as you say but as a result it kind of has a has a wider appeal as a as a really strong spectacle movie you know when you're dealing with this sort of uh, f uh, movie franchise that has such a well established fan base you get some people who are pretty pretty into it you know they live and die by Divergent and Insurgent I mean what's the craziest thing you've had happen to you that you've gone Oh, maybe this is like a little bit above and beyond. Um, yeah, the craziest thing I think uh, our first exposure to it was because I remember I got the job. I just finished something else, and I kind of got, I got the job and didn't have time to even really think about it. And then we did the film, and then mid filming was it mid filming? Yeah, pretty much when we still were filming, we went and did a comic con for the first time with mm -hmm. a film, and I guess that was our first exposure to people being kind of invested in the storyline already. Um, but uh, yeah, someone had made me like a, a kind of doll, um, and then also included said gave me a doll and a bottle of mezcal tequila, which I thought was a, an intriguing mix. So and you, I wasn't you dumped really the sure. doll and kept the tequila. <laughs> <laughs> I kept them both. Of course. Um, yeah, yeah. 